started. All right, everybody, the Sports Inquirer here with uh, Grover Hinsdale, head coach of Georgia Tech men's track and field. We were just talking off camera about the cold weather and the, the conditions we're dealing with in Atlanta. How do you guys handle I know you're in the indoor season, I guess, technically, but you got to get out there at some point, I'm sure, and get on the big track. Uh, how do you we handle do. training in uh, February or January? Well, it's um, for the most part, we have we do have a we do have a facility that we can actually to that we can go to if the weather is just not going to let you be outside that day. For instance, a raining in the forty degrees. I mean, you're just not going to be out in that kind of thing, you know, temp- temperature or climate. So. We can go into the McCamish Pavilion, uh, which is our basketball arena, hmm. and there is a uh, a circular uh, loop in that facility that is carpeted that we can use in emergency situations. It's a little hard, and you wouldn't want to be in there very often. Um, it's not, you know, conducive to uh, continuous training just because of the hardness of the floor and what it would do to their their legs and that kind of thing or the other option is to go into our football facility which is the brock indoor football practice facility um we can get in decent workouts in there on a pretty good surface uh fairly soft um and we do that on days we just cannot be outside but mainly what we do uh on days that are kind of like January, February days in Atlanta. They a lot of them are overcast, damp, cool. Not not particularly freezing, but but overcast, damp, and cool. Not real comfortable outside, but not terrible either. We'll go into the Brock and do our warm up, our stretching, our strides. Go right out to the track. If we're doing an interval training, they can do whatever interval distance we're doing that day. Come right back in for their interval. Uh, time and then right back out on the track and we can do that uh we do that often uh, and it works pretty well it's not you know it's not having uh it's not like having an, your own indoor track um uh, that would be obviously the greatest thing but we can certainly get uh quality work in and that's really what you need to do so uh we just make do and make it work and and it's fine uh yeah is it more uh do you worry about injuries? And because I know coldness leads to stiff muscles, uh, things like that. Is that really more the fear than anything, especially with your sprinters because it's so fast twitch? Yeah, I mean, you, you've got to be careful. And, and we, we will a lot of times on certain days adjust what they're doing, maybe the distance they're doing and the time they're doing it in uh, based on how cold it is. I mean, obviously, if it's just frigid temperatures outside, you're not going to take somebody out and just do – all out sprinting type work, that kind of thing. That doesn't happen often, even on nice days, but you certainly wouldn't consider it on a frigid, frigid day. Yeah, you just came back from the Carolina Challenge. And uh, first of all, how does it feel to have an indoor season? So fingers crossed so far, considering everything we've gone through over the past few years. And uh, just what are your takeaways from that, uh, that meet for the team? Well, the I guess the big the big scare at Carolina Challenge this weekend was not COVID; it was the weather. Uh, they were expecting some some pretty bad winter weather. Um, I saw Curtis Fry on Friday. Uh, he's the head coach at Carolina. I've known him for over forty years, and he walked by and I and he he had that worried look on his face, like winter weather was coming in that night. He didn't know what was going to happen. I told him, I said, Curtis is going to work out just fine. He said, no problem. He said, you sure about that? And I said, absolutely. And and that night some stuff came in, but it wasn't anything that uh, brought it down. But it, it just feels good to be back at, at meets and, and actually having an opportunity for parents come see their children compete and fans come in. And we're still masked up. And that's, you know, that's part of our life for the last couple of years. And not my favorite. Uh, thing by any means to be in an indoor facility for eight eight hours in a day with a mask on but the kids are getting an opportunity to compete uh they're getting to do it in front of friends and family and fans and that's that's about all we could ask for right now and i'm very pleased that that's what's taking place uh yeah and it looked like ethan uh, kerr now he won the five thousand meter uh competition at the meet uh, just what about his performance and uh, just your distance runners in general, uh, them uh, starting off the season for you? 
Uh, there, there's a handful in that group that have really had good starts to the season. Ethan, Ethan being one for him as a freshman to come in and win a, uh, a Division One meet, and a very competitive meet, actually, um, in his first indoor season ever. It's very impressive. He's, I'm, I'm looking forward to kind of following his progress um, for the next few years. Coach Drosky does a great job developing those guys, and uh, Ethan is one I'll be, I'll be following very closely. The other members of that group um, that have have really shown uh, or or had excellent starts in their season is Zach, <clears throat> excuse me, Zach Jaeger um, ran a big PR a couple of weeks ago in the mile at 406 up at Vanderbilt. Uh, we have a young man also in that mile group that I'm really I have been excited about for a long time now. His first year at Georgia Tech, he was going through, um, it was, I didn't, you know, it was, I guess it, you could call it an injury. It was, it was preventing him from competing or in training like he, he needed to be and, and wanted to be. So it was, it, it was just in more of an irritant in a, in kind of the middle part of his body that he just was limiting his ability to train and compete. So he really sat out virtually his entire first year. Um, this year, he seems to have gotten a handle on on the treatment and and how to approach it and and get it right. And it is right now. He's training very well, uh, and that's Miles Collins. And I'm really excited about uh, his next few weeks and and next few years in this program. He's just a Incredible young man with a lot of talent, and he's just kind of you just kind of see mentally and physically things are coming together right now. Um, James Cragen is a three three thousand five thousand runner for us that uh, was pretty much number one in cross country all through the fall, and James has kind of hit that uh, finally gotten you know into that groove of of really fulfilling the, the talent we felt he had for a long time. <clears throat> He's kind of a senior leader of that group now and, and doing a great job. <clears throat> and then a middle distance runner, one other one in that group, um, Alex Thomas, who was a freshman last year, 800-meter runner. Uh, he was a finalist in the ACC Outdoor uh, 800 last year. And uh, I'm really excited about his future also. Alex is just one of those – young men, <clears throat> excuse me, that um, every race he is, it's all in. And I mean, he will dig deep and he's just fun to watch. And um, I think he's going to have a great career in our program. Yeah. And then moving on to your, uh, your, your sprinters. I know Jamison Miller at the 400 is a big performer for you. Uh, I've been hearing about Bradley Favors as well. Uh, another guy yes. who does the, the sprints. What about that group and how they're, just rounding in the form in this uh, spring season. That's not a big group. That's a group of, of three or four guys on this team. But um, we lost a kind of a pretty good sized group of, of veterans last year from graduation. So this is this is not totally brand new group, but uh, pretty much. Jameson is a third year in our program and has done had a really good start to his indoor season. Um, two years ago, he finished the indoor season at the ACC uh, running a split on a uh, DMR for us of faster than he had actually PR'd outdoor in high school. And he was really kind of on a great roll. And then they shut the season down, and that was it. Last year, it just seemed like there was a really long layoff for him. And for him, it just seemed to not work real well. And things weren't, he just wasn't in it. He never got into a really good groove last year. But this year, uh, he has. And he's back running very well right now uh, for him. And then there's two newcomers, freshmen in that group that I'm really excited about. They were the number three and five. 2021 high school graduates in the country last year in the 400. Uh, Weston Baptiste um, is was number three in the country last year. Bradley Favors was number five. Now, they have both come in um, highly heralded, <clears throat> as they should be. 
we found out in the first couple of weeks uh, of school this year that Bradley had he had injured a shoulder playing football as a junior in high school. And one time during his senior year, running a four by one, um, his shoulder came back out of socket during wow. running a four by one relay. Goodness. And during the first week of school, he came into my office one day and told me that the night before his shoulder had come out of socket during his sleep. Oh, goodness. And that was the third time it had happened that week. So we got him down to the trainer and got him over to our orthopod and they decided that he needed to have surgery, which he did right away. And he was pretty much shut down for the entire fall semester. So he's back training right now and doing, you know, his, his level of training right now is right where it should be based on where he started. So he's doing a really good job, but he's going to be redshirting during the indoor season and get ready for outdoor. Weston Baptiste has had a, I would say, a good fall of training. Not great, like I was hoping, but he's been limited because of some shin issues. Hmm. I think we're getting to a point now where we're getting through that, and he's getting back into some really consistent training. He opened up last weekend uh, running a 4 by 4 for us. That was his first indoor race of his life. Um, we're training through this weekend with Weston and we're going to Virginia Tech next week, not this weekend, but next weekend and then back to Clemson the following weekend. And uh, I, I'm just real high on both these young men. I think they're going to be outstanding. They've had a little bit of a slow start, but uh, they're very talented young men. I'm really excited about it. Yeah, it sounds like obviously you want to compete every race and, and do the best you can, but it sounds like this indoor season is going to be really good preparation for the outdoor season. Is that kind of what you're seeing with the layout of the team? Uh, just yes. the way it's shaking out for you? I do. Um, it, it's just, you know, there are a handful of teams in our conference that have indoor facilities. And you can tell when you go to these early indoor meets in the season, it's, it's very obvious that they've had uh, pretty much carte blanche uh, training of anything they wanted to do, they could do in their facilities. We're in a situation where that's not quite the case. We have to be very innovative, and we are, and we get we get our training in. But there's there, like I said, there would be no substitute for having a a a full fledged indoor facility. So it puts us a little bit behind, but we deal with that, and we have for years. That's not a big issue. And um, when it comes conference time, we'll be ready to line up and get after it. Yeah, and then what about your field athletes? Uh, I'm sure the weather's a little – are you sure you can still really? jump and hammer throw and everything like that in these conditions? But uh, you have some good returners in uh, McKinley Thompson, your high jumper, Cameron O'Neill, freshman of the year last year in the long jump. What about the field athletes and how they're um, getting ready? We have three three guys in that field group that that uh, need to be recognized and should be, and, and certainly – uh, you mentioned McKinley Thompson, our high jumper. He's he's um, he's had a good start to his indoor season. Uh, we've been I've been looking for McKinley to make that kind of hit that next phase, and he's been very consistent over his last his first year or so in the program. And I'm kind of looking for him very shortly to hit that next level in in the high jump. Uh, we have two. <clears throat> Uh, horizontal jumpers, uh, Cameron O'Neill was freshman of the year last year in the ACC. Um, he's had a, <clears throat> he has been very, he's been consistently good through the early part of the indoor season. And he's another one. When I'm looking for it any week now, I think we're going to see Cameron just hit one. And it's going to be, <clears throat> excuse me, a new phase uh, for him. Uh, the other one would be John Watkins in the triple jump. Same thing. John's just been very consistent. And it's just, you know, in the next two or three weeks, I'm kind of looking for that that next level for him as well. But three very talented young men and, and uh, with, with bright futures ahead. Yeah, and then we'll conclude on this. You have the your next meet coming up this weekend. Uh, how's the preparation been going for it? Uh, are you do, you do you feel good about the team just heading into the uh, the Bob Pollock Invitational uh, starting on uh, January 28th? We do. We are taking a very limited number of guys to that meet, <clears throat> but the ones that are going, it's very 
going to be a very important meet for them. Excuse me just a second. <clears throat> Winter time, dry air is killing my throat. <laughs> That's okay. But this is going to be a very important meet for this group going over. Um, we do this on occasion. We have our, our, our schedule set that we have to do in the fall and get it approved and, and the schedule is set. Our initial plan was to not go anywhere on this weekend. We were going to have three, three weeks in a row and then this off weekend and then two weeks in a row and an off weekend and then conference. However, some of the distance, middle distance guys, Kostrowski felt that after week two, they needed to have a week of training through kind of resting from competition, but still training. And then it would be more important for them to train, to compete this weekend. So he's taking a group uh, of distance, middle distance over to Bob Pollock. The rest of us are staying here and training through. And then um, we'll, for the most part, a lot of the main group, all the group will be going to Virginia Tech the following weekend. So that's kind of what we've done. But, yeah, the, the group that's going over to Bob Pollock, this is a big weekend for them. So yeah. hopefully we'll have a great meet and we'll be right back where we need to be um, heading into Virginia Tech. You know, you bring up Alan a lot, and we've spoken with Alan quite a bit with the <clears throat> during the cross country season. Sure, uh, you two have worked together, and you've been at Georgia Tech. Just your background; it's been a long time working together. Uh, but how do you work that synergy as far as him handling the distance runners? You obviously with the field and the, the sprinters. Uh, but how's that synergy work with uh, you two as far as uh, handling the responsibilities of being uh, head coaches? Well, it's it's a it's a great relationship. Uh, we've you know, Alan was in the program as a student athlete in the early years when I was here, and mm -hmm. you know he he graduated and went on into banking, the uh, you know uh, banking career. And we at that time, a um, couple of years later, we we were going to lose our distance coach and coach uh, folks who was the head coach at that time. Uh, Alan, he brought up Alan's name, thinking, you know, my opinion, and I thought Alan would be a, a great young coach, and, and we got in touch with him and see if he had interest, and he had more than a little interest. He was very excited about the opportunity, and he came, and he just developed into an outstanding coach, and there's really, you know, Alan, Alan works, coaches the middle distance and distance guys in our program. He's not my assistant. But he, he coaches them, and I just, you know, we've been together long enough. I just kind of let him go, and he, he makes the right decisions on those guys, does a great job of developing him, and we just have a great relationship. Well, Coach, thank you for your time. We greatly appreciate it, and uh, good luck this weekend. Thank you so much. Good talking to you. Good talking to you, too.